In the city of Kapwe, the Straight Out of Broken Hill Arts and Cultural Festival. We want to traditional drinks. She want to mungoyo maheuna toboa. Traditional food. She kanda ifisa she kata palumanda. Traditional dances from all of the ten provinces. Come and see the Kapwe Cranium at the Godfrey Chitalu Stadium. 27 August, 8 hours to 18 hours. Local artists, children's entertainment, food, traditions, and more. Celebrate the Broken Hill Arts and Cultural Festival. Entrance is free at the Godfrey Chitalu Stadium. For more info, follow us on Facebook at Chalk Kapwe Cultural Heritage Organizing Committee. It's that Z podcast. My name is K. Plus. And you are the other guy. The other guy. Elson. Elson. Yes. And this episode is brought to you by Let's Chat. Now, Let's Chat is an app that, of course, you know, we've been seeing a whole lot of on Instagram. I've noticed I've that been, too. I've been seeing Maki Two post about it. I've seen Mutale Mutale Mwanza, Mwanza. I think. But of course, we've got Crispin here to let us know, you know, what's happening. We've been seeing this everywhere. But Crispin from Let's Chat, our sponsor for this episode. What is Less Chat and why are we seeing it everywhere on social, on the, on social media platforms? It goes well with yeah. the podcast as well because all we do here is it's chat. chat. Yes, exactly. Most of the applications won't allow you to have a group call with so many people. Yeah. But w because of um, our application being able to accommodate so many yeah. uh, people and it being data saving, so there is less consumption of data and um, all that traffic. Mm. So it's able to accommodate so many people at the same time and have a smooth chat smooth video quality we're, we're having uh, a, w a wedding in a family soon but i'm not sharing this information <laughs> just yet I, I can't imagine 30 of us in a in a group chat you know what i mean it, it'll be the fact that it's also data saving do you do you understand the amount of talk <laughs> the amount of gossip you always have that one relative that what? doesn't shut up exactly it's now worse when they know that they're not using that much data i think mm -hmm. for me this is for the cool friends mm -hmm. yeah the I, third, think so. I don't even have 30 cool friends but at least i know oh, you have I've, at least one at least i have one who's a bit of a headache i need painkillers every time i talk to him a bitch. but anyway um the idea knowing in the back of my mind that i can actually add 30 more people to a chat that's mm -hmm. incredible it's incredible yes. and then i'm seeing other things like uh moods what what's moods, Why, what's moods? moods. so moods, moods yeah. is one of like the mood swings <laughs> 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 no really, yeah. but it's more like that actually okay if uh. you wake up um you have that mood swing you're talking about you just go to your let's chat and upload it like um a status you will find you can take a picture there you can use text to just write what it, what right, mood you wait, are in. wait 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 I, I see it now or templates we already have templates that's that show the different types of moods you may be ah that's genius because you, you know because i get grumpy a lot a see? lot right so if i set you that think? as a mood yeah uh -huh. fam okay relax so if, if I set that as a mood, then people are going to know like, oh, okay, so now he's a little grumpy. Let's stay away from him. Exactly. And, and if I'm feeling can... flirty, I can upload that too? Yes, and you can actually add music to it. So if there's a song that best describes your particular mood, yeah. you can use um, a template that may already be there. We have templates that have different Ah, oh, this is a winner. That are awesome. And the beauty about it is when you create that mood it you don't just use it on let's start alone you can actually download it with the song playing in the background really? and share it on the different platforms um that you may be i've been seeing this what are you what are, what are you what are you People doing what are, are you doing right now <laughs> what are you what are you doing right now dude this yes i've, I've been seeing this marketo has been doing this <laughs> that, that makes me very uncomfortable i don't know why you're doing that right now <laughs> okay, let, 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 let crispin explain well, why, why, why? I, I, it's I've been seeing that. I'm seeing the tutorial as well in the mm -hmm. video. People are shaking their yes. phones. Like, what's, why, what's why, why, is, why, is he, why is he shaking his phone? Um, it's a, we call that the shake phone feature, which enables you to exchange contacts with people uh, just by shaking phones. Pa, 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 and um, it helps them join the application. Wait, so if we're in close proximity? Some, yes, in close pro proximity, you both have the, the, the application. The yes, going to the activity page, you just shake phones together. And um, the... You, the hmm. person who already was using the application, yeah. you get the six <coughs> quarter airtime. The new person that just joined the application gets the one quarter wow. airtime. Wow. This is genius. Genius, yes. dude. So you, <laughs> you would do well to download Let's Chat right now. You, you know what I, you know what and, I, you know what yeah? I think, dude? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we are, we are creatures of habits. We, 
we stick to stuff that we are already used to, not necessarily yeah. because they've got the the best features or because they are better, but because we just, that's what we know about. But based off what 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 Crispin is saying, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there is a lot more uh, reason to use less chat than any other chat platform. I'm, you get I'm, what I mean? I'm already on right that's, now, bro. That's true. That's true. And our groups have very nice features, such as the notice board. You know how someone can talk about something and you have to go through the whole chat in order yeah, to find that. Yeah, I hate yeah. that. We yeah. have a notice board where you can just pin that to the notice board. Every mm. notice is that you want. I'm sold. You just click on it. I'm sold. And we have a discover uh, part in the, in the application itself where you can actually play games on the app. Um, there are some what? games. Yes, there are some games. Uh, you can make new friends just using the nearby features uh, to see who else is on Let's Chat where you are, and uh, you make friends with them. It's it's good. Crispin, wow. say say no more. <laughs> say, say no less. more. Say no more. We're sold. Great. Try out Let's Chat. You can get it on uh, Google Play Store right mm-hmm. now. Try out Let's Chat. They on, can on. actually use the link <coughs> in the description of this video to get to exactly. Google Play Store. Nice one, Crispin. We're sold. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, enjoy the episode. Another amazing episode of That Z Podcast. My name is K Plus and you are Elson. Elson, the nice other one. Guy. The other guy. Now, this episode though, ah, we're in the presence of greatness. And I keep saying this with every episode though, yeah? Right. I know, but it we've loses, got great people. It loses its oomph. Okay, today we are in the presence of royalty. Royalty. Coppola royalty. I mean, you say this every time, but today is different. Today is different. And for me, it's, it's, it's closer to home because he's, our guest today is a Coppola artist. He's a Coppola born artist. I'm a Coppola born presenter. Uh-huh. So it's, it's really close to home for me, if you know what I mean. The air feels different in here. Ah, sweet you, ever, you ever see a person? Yeah. Look at me when I talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see a person like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so yeah. needy, Shem. When they walk in a room, mm-hmm. they walk in a restaurant, they, they command this, everybody, it doesn't matter if you're on a date and you're trying yeah. to act cool. There's that one person when they walk into a room, the tough guy disappears and the bitch comes out. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Maki 2! This nigga here yeah, acting cool with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see this guy every day? Oh, man. Hmm? Uh, thanks you know, for having me, guys. Thanks a lot. We we have to start this episode by first. I need I need to give you your flowers, bro. I don't want. You know, I don't you know, know flowers, uh, like, like literally. You know this literally. literally. Yeah. No, that that would look good. That, that would look uh, a certain way. Unless you're not comfortable with your masculinity. 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 No, no, no. It's not about. It's about that actually. Speaking of <laughs> <laughs> before, before we, before we yeah. get carried away. Yeah. Because we got carried away in the other episode. Yeah. Have you been here before? Is this your first time? Like this joint? It, yeah. No. First time, yeah? yeah. So we are shooting from this amazing restaurant called Aroma. Aroma. It said Kamloops Mall. I didn't know it as well. Right, so I would always drive up and down Kalingalinga, and I've never been here up until yeah. somebody asked me to come here. Did you know that the same guy that owns this place owns the orchard? Really? Yeah, the yeah. orchard. So, so this is like, if you notice the, the look and feel, it's kind of mm. like what the orchard is like. And yeah, it's, it's incredible, man. It's so incredible. we're at the wine cellar right now. Um, they have got, um, I'll tell you this now, because Daniel will kick my ass. If you don't say it, if I think I while, while you look for that, I, I need to emphasize that the wines you're seeing in the background here, we're not touching any of them. Uh, I'm, I'm, really? No, you can't. You don't even take alcohol, do you? You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it's gonna be a good episode. I can feel it. Why they are going to? You know when I'm going to buy a dinner bag, kitchen party, or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to be in the mood for a man bag. Fi akuri a man bag. Much what I'm paying? Eh? Who's saying that? You know what I'm plan? Just take. Just take. You know, you remind me of uh, my housemate and I when uh, he used to make so much money mm. at some point in his career. So much money that when he goes shopping, he would put so much. You know, stuff in a trolley. Yeah. You get home, you're unpacking. 
we live in a flat on the third floor where we used to live when I had a housemate before I got married. And we're unpacking everything and there's dog food. <laughs> and did you have a dog? <laughs> you have a dog. <laughs> It's just because someone's money is just picking up everything. And I, I, I understand what he's talking about. You know, like, you don't drink, but you're Zambian. And that Zambian in you just wants yeah. to take something as you leave the as building. As long as it's free. We as, exactly. So exactly. upstairs, these guys are opening Pakona Urban. Yeah. Um, Daniel took us on a tour on the, of this place oh, and how huge thing, yeah. this place is. Yeah. So they're actually going to have a club upstairs. Oh, nice. Yeah. This place is big. Yeah, it looks incredible, man. Kamloops by, Mall. Uh, uh, you know Kamloops Road? Yeah. The mall right at the corner of Kamloops Road. Where they shop, right? Yeah. This is where this place is. Opposite this boarding house. That's how Kamloops I... Road. <laughs> at the corner where they shop right at the mall. Do not act like you have never picked up kids from that boarding house. I've before. never picked up yeah, kids from that boarding up. house before. I'm a happily married guy. Maki too. I was talking about, about boarding house. You know that boarding house, right? Yeah. Nope. Shit. What about boarding house? <laughs> Well, now we know. Thank you, Elson. Oh, you Ma- don't, don't, Ma- don't. But anyway, uh, this place is full of boarding houses. Yeah, this area. Yeah, yeah. because University of Zambia is just uh, a walk away. And they Onza are. as well. Makito, I was talking about flowers, and I, I, I got into radio July of 2007. Pretty much, this is when the name Makito was sort of, you know, seeping into radio, and, you know, uh, we started getting to know the name a little bit more. Yeah. And 2007, July, I get into radio. By 2008, I was a bit of a hot name on the Copper Belt. You know, I was a Yara fan. I can confirm Brentford. that. He can confirm that. And I think what made my name even hotter, and which is why I'm giving you a flowers right now, is when you mentioned my name, I think in like five songs in a row. The Dude, word? my bookings just skyrocketed that year. Yeah. Guy voice, guy Now I have to give you flowers. You and Afunika. Afunika, I think a year later, mentioned my name in Nadlolet Selema. Dude, the bookings that started getting after these two mentioned, the two couple of kings mentioned my name. Mm. And now he's telling me he's going to invoice me. Yeah, he he, he needs to. We need to break him off something. (laughs) Ain't nothing to talk about, brother. The invoice is coming. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Sam Sam. Market two. Welcome, Welcome to that, to that, that podcast. podcast. Thank you so much, guys. I've always <laughs> wanted to say that to him. There's two people. Six there's months we've been hustling to bring Maki on. Six months, man. There's two people that. Well, you know I was supposed to come on like last week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. According to what we agreed. Yeah. And oh, we agreed this what about four months ago? Uh, yeah, a while back. <laughs> So two people I'll that I've always to wanted to say, <laughs> yeah. "Welcome to that Z podcast," is Maki Two and the president. So I've said <sighs> that to one. We have sent the message out to the universe. President Haka in the H. Lema. Don't you have his phone yeah. number? Yeah. I should have someone. <laughs> yeah. Levels. Yeah. Anyway. I'll try and be nice to you on this podcast so that we get him to come. I do have a lot of interesting questions. I feel like I'm going to be in the background <coughs> in this because you and Kalenga obviously has got to have a lot of history. Or maybe because we have a lot of history, we've talked about most of the stuff. We've already spoken about everything. So you can come with, uh, you know, you can refresh. Yeah, yeah. so whatever happens refresh, here, yeah. you know, you and I are still cool. No. I, <laughs> I, want I hate it when people talk shit about you online and then meet you and act like oh no yeah no no, yeah, no, no. We listen the same that. energy bro yeah. keep no, the same listen, energy uh, listen the reason why i'm saying that is yeah. i heard you were talking smack about me really yeah nah on your set on my set yeah hmm, what did i say that you thought i was i was full of myself yeah but everybody says that also then yeah, yeah, but but him specific and and so you know what's interesting is but that's that's fact though but that I'm full of myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I hear that. Yeah, it's not like it's, you're not hiding anything. Yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, I, so 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 it gets interesting because so when he said that the entire crew all chimed in and they agreed, and my crew is here. <laughs> Did you agree? Hey. <laughs> okay, okay. Speaking of, hold on yeah speaking of keeping the energy mm. the day that i came to your set mm-hmm. and none of you said nothing to my face we were polite <laughs> <laughs> and we can re- <laughs> say it now <laughs> to your face <laughs> i remember the dude in the blue hoodie no 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 not, not you who's the other guy there was one camera guy who was kneeling wait what, what, what were you on the set by the way this guy don't don't ask such questions. No, you're right. We need to. We need, if you're on this, Kabobs, what was he doing on your Where set? Where is he? Mwenya. Yeah, yes. And he was apparently one of the guys that was chiming that I'm an idiot. Ha! No, nah. that wouldn't come from Mwenya. Get over it's it. Get him. You are an idiot. Get over it. Maki, too. Let's talk about your journey, though, in music, man. 
Before we even talk about your retirement in the year 2022, you've been yeah. in the game for close to what, 19, 20 years? Exactly 20 years. Exactly 20 years. Yeah, the first but, time I ever yeah. recorded like a professional song yeah. was in 2002. Damn, a whole yeah. 20 years. Yeah. I won't even talk about your retirement now. I'd just love this interview to be that journey. The 20 years in this episode, you know what I mean? So yeah, when people tell me like, yo, are you doing this too early? I'm like, you don't know. Man. 20 whole years, know. bro. <clears throat> Dude. Yeah. Are you really retiring? Yeah. Can we because, talk about the re- we'll talk about the retirement sure. because yeah. I, I just want to get this out of the way because I, so many people Jay Z so many people have said they're retiring Michael Jordan Michael Jordan <clears throat> uh, who's the guy that plays uh, NFL the white guy uh, Tom Brady Tom Brady retired for like two months sat at home and couldn't stand his wife and kids I didn't even I don't even think it was two months. It was, it was like less than month. that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So is this are you really retiring? We're not gonna hear but, you coming back again. So. Okay, there are two things. There's, oh, I'm going to do this publicity stunt and people are going to yeah, yeah. retire. And then there's, I feel like I've retired. Like, this is the time to let go. And then you feel like, you know what? I think I missed it. Let me come back. That's two different scenarios. So for me, maybe I might come back. But for now, I'm done, man. I'm done. Can I quote you on something? Speaking of your retirement, you, you quoted recently, uh, <clears throat> uh, happy Sunday to everyone who prayed for the downfall of KMP. Your prayers are working. Mm. You know, this statement is full of insinuations. What were you trying to say? I mean, what has really happened at First KM- of all, KMP? I think, I, think, yeah. I think people really prayed for P- KMP's downfall. Like they mm. weren't uh, speaking behind my back (laughs) they were like blunt like on my page in my comments like you know what i mean like poking holes in in. so um obviously you guys knew like our director started going for uh, interrogations at these different different things and um uh, artists started leaving the camp and all sorts of things so many things that i can't even um start talking about here but obviously, we weren't in such a good place when I um, put out that whole post. But that whole post was, I talked about a lot of things on that post. The three main things that um, I was trying to put across is our, our music industry right now is not as lucrative as it should be. Yeah. That's why we don't have <clears throat> that many investors coming in to invest. So when you have like a few people like, uh, BK or Mr. Nguruve from Nexus and a few others come in. Mm. I think what I want to offer are very encouraged. You know, that sort of thing. Even when you have like a company like KMP or Nexus or what J Rocks is trying to do over there at um, Headphone, whatever. Headphone Music, yeah. And what different, different, all these guys need to be encouraged because we don't have that many people who are pushing that arrange, uh, agenda of building the industry. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was getting at. I was really just trying to highlight that, hey, this thing that has changed so much um, of the industry, rebranding us, like there's been so much growth in the last two, three years yeah. because of this thing. Because you didn't support it, because you were shitting on it. Yeah. <clears throat> Look where we are now. Do you think that now that you've retired, and mm. considering how much you love the game, don't mm. you think maybe a year down the line you'd be like, ah, you know what, let me just go back and cut the grass. Exactly. There's a lot of bullshit on the market right now. Let exactly me just go back and exactly cut the I grass. Say. Yeah, yeah. but I think I made it clear that I'm actively, like I'm retiring from actively making music. Okay. What does that yeah. mean? It means... It's too much English there. Basic English. <laughs> <laughs> Basic book <vocab. laughs> Okay, anyway. Yeah. Especially for someone like you. No, like here. Yeah, I finished Chakru, college. Chakru, I did one year. Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, what I really want to venture in, and I think this is where the gap has been, is I want to go into management. So... Ah. Um, I'll forever love music. I'll forever record one song in a while. I just won't be as active like I'm buffing up the stage now and I'll say no, you know, that sort of thing. I need to have a bit of 
to keep a bit of respect and dignity for myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes kula vati waamba kurisha relevance, no mbafi, waamba vyokusangwa. Singing just for the sake of it. And so our industry's got um maybe I'm, I'm I'm all over the place with this. Forgive me. But our industry's got a ceiling. So when you get to that ceiling, no matter how gifted, no matter how forward thinking you are, no matter how revolutionary you, you claim to be, there's only so much you can do with talent. Yeah, you can go effort. beyond that. Yeah. If if him beefy. Yeah. If they fly can number actual budget, team peer fish at chin if you know. Eh, quite all right. <laughs> Uh, talent now quite no question or tune to even have read the people you've read the industry you know exactly what to do but for you to go to the second to the next level, level you need money and no matter how you slice it you can't run away from that fact if you just see like the last two three years when nexus music and kmp Yeah. have been like in the game you'd see the difference things have changed man like the past man, two years money 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 talks why do you say english of impiet quang quang and bullshit walks no don't to unbox change yeah i'm on a branding at change i have a guy nobody in the punch one book and she got to mama keksi eh shan to unbox change or don't hmm no to my shows to talk about to monto i said this are 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 ya kupanda why desperate unga buli makufi ka rent ka re page na pole poka fe ah yo in to pin re 10 people started like yeah you can offer me that i'm i'm worth more people started realizing their worth because they had my problem yeah. to no no to that what was sorted, sorted out yeah. people are not thinking with their stomach anymore mm. so yeah um after you get to a certain level especially like in Zambia me I'll tell you for, uh, something for free I can make someone a superstar I I know the right people to make the right beats for this market I know the right people to write the right the right music yeah as long as na stuff established oh you they are uh, they can be a likable person na kwa tukufina ka piwa ka so na so na so na so na so it's easy for me to make them like the number one artist in the country mm. but now when you have to now start talking about uh, on a continental level yeah you are competing against the likes of David Do and Diamond Platinums and Wizkid and all these other guys that's a different ball game there people spend like 500,000 you know social media campaign Yeah. They buy airtime on Trace MTV based channel or and name it there, there. That's why you find that even go to like a video in a normal procedure. Yeah. Akatambisha kole yero. Akatambisha kole in after five days again <coughs> and then you have all these songs that play like every almost every 10 minutes you have like the same artist playing. That's the difference because those guys actually pay publishers to make sure that their the music is, is right there. that they're yeah. plugged nicely. When you go on Spotify it's in different So the most popular playlist. Yeah. You know what I mean? No lo feel what you have for at some point you 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 land on the song. So for us to get to that level. Yeah. We need money. How are we going to make money is if the the industry is lucrative. If investors look at the industry and see like oh this is a Making business sense. I can invest yeah. money and rip right now you can't invest a million kwacha in, in in Zambian music and get that money back. How? So are we saying Kalandan just wasted his money on you guys? No. Yeah. Of course. That guy is a visionary. Yeah. He's got a plan. He's not talking about Am my investors never pusana na bada bantu ako right? We don't need sponsor over there. Yeah, yeah. Boss, in fact, let's not even So basically Kalandan Kalandan was not putting money in to reap. He was putting money as a sponsor to help the industry, help exactly. grow the industry, help exactly. grow you guys. Exactly. See what's possible yeah. when there's money in the industry. Exactly. And people can see can see what's possible. Okay, so let me let me take you back, man. We we started a journey going back, you know, 20 years when you started uh, you know, your music career. I, you know, if I go back 2003, the only rapper I can think of in Zambia then, uh Crisis, I think, and a few others. Who were your influences though? Ah, man, um uh, there were a lot of um rappers back yeah. then even before Crisis. We had the rap prophets you remember the rap prophets nope how old are you <coughs> what say? What so um <laughs> okay yeah. remember sounds good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Sounds good had rappers. Yeah, I do. Those was on NBC TV. Ukwa band, Ukwa band, Ukwa band, yeah. Rap Prophets, Nasty D, um, uh, Dad Zimas was more of a fusion of rap and, and dancehall. Yeah, I mean, by 2002, Dad Zimas had already done his uh, album. That was like 98, 99. Yeah, because yeah. Crisis album came out in 2002, 2000. Somewhere the Christ gave us good, some good songs. Though. Okay, like, all yeah. I know yeah. is this. All I know is um, Rhythm Nation Project and uh, that was like ninety nine, two thousand. Yes, Nexus Music. Yeah, yeah. We had um, uh, Master Flow, Keith Mbulo, Keith Mbulo, Chilulemba, Chilulemba. Yes, Chilulemba was what uh, the sharpshooter. What, what is it called? Chilulemba. I thought it was Chilulemba. Oh yeah, it was yeah. a sharpshooter. Yeah, yeah. Bongo something as well. Yeah, we had um, Kumawa. Gelo Wanga. That was the uh, yeah, Rhythm Nation uh, project, yeah. Yeah, we had a, a bunch of rappers even before Crisis dropped his um, uh. his um, album. In fact, Crisis was on Rhythm Nation project. Yes, he was. With, uh, with a song with it, Lily... No, no, no. What's her name again? Anyway, Lindiwe. whatever. Lindiwe, Lindiwe, yes, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so there were a lot of people who were doing um, yeah. doing it before us. In fact, um, a lot of people come to me and tell me like, yo, so you paved the way for the Copa Belt and ABCD. I'm like, guy, there were so many greats who, in fact, even these guys that you think are Lusaka, Lusaka people are like from Pongo, uh, PK Shala, JK, JK Nasty, yeah. D, George Wangu, like yeah. the list is endless of people who just paved the way. Maybe for, for like new Copa Belt music, Maybe you'd say Glorious Band and Dandy Crazy yeah. were like the first um, people to blow up post 2005. I keep reminding Dandy Crazy when I was thinking, I, was, I think I was in grade 10 and I was, uh, you know, starting out uh, as a neighborhood DJ. I keep reminding him how he used to come, and I'm not trying to embarrass him or anything, but. Yeah. Ali Sapageto Mukamba, like with, he used to come to my place with a CD uh-huh. so I could play him at the house parties in Indeka <laughs> Village. <laughs> yeah. He plays music. His it, hustle was on, a, on his another His hustle was on another level. level. Yeah. The guy had one song for almost five years which yeah. he would push at every event in Kitwe. Which that was Dandy Crazy. Chimutunta. Nikakuona baby, we chimutunta. Chimutunta. For almost five years, the guy was pushing one song yeah. until it sort of hit. Yeah, and then the 2008 album is one that just when yeah. he came to Chingola and did uh, 2007. yeah 2007 Danger Zone yeah yeah wish you guys were a formidable crew but though. his talent wouldn't allow him to produce more songs the time wouldn't allow because uh, no 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 I, I mean the times were not very well coming of that style of Zambian music okay. you know what I mean there was a time when yeah. Zambia was not appreciating Zambian music not even Zambian music like that type of Zambian the, music exactly you know, like, that type yeah remember this was a time when like being a Yo Bali was cool yeah. Nowadays, you're like, ah. So you can't be found Mario, listening to... Your Bali. Yeah. But back then, remember we had like, um, Mainz and Dadizimas doing their whole... Chibaba. Like it was really like, all right, baby, shan, shan, Like being ghetto was not allowed. Yeah. You know? We were softies. So the in fact, was full of softies, yeah. when the first ghetto, even before Dandy, I think Nasty D was the first like person who blew up like street ghetto yeah. music. I tie was Nasty. song of the year that year. Yeah, yeah. I remember on Radio Phoenix it was like uh, twenty one weeks on number one. Yeah, ah, that guy though. One song, it really blew us. Okay, number seven to quite a good direction. No, no, no. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this because um, mm. I think I'm just trying to give people a clear picture of where you came uh-huh. from. Because for people, especially in Lusaka, mm. you just sort of showed up from nowhere. You know what I mean? Okay, so, so I'm trying to... Let me help you here. Yeah. Um, let me just give you like a little background. I'm sorry, I have no short answers. Um, so, of course, I always loved music. Mm. You know, I would always have... Uh, it ain't a typical... Uh, musician story. No, I used to write uh, other people's lyrics, Tupac lyrics in my school books, A, B, C, D. <laughs> Those, <Yeah>. like <clears throat> OG. So, until w- on this fateful day, we we're about to have like um, uh, an end of year variety show. 
type yeah. thing. And there were guys rehearsing in the um, in the in the hall. So we actually went there and I found this kid rapping. I landed a paludi mum guys. The rap I want to list what we know. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's whack. And everybody's like, ah, you are just hating. And I met the guys a bit. I told them, okay. My Nara Kunganda, then because something I don't care say perform up there. But I'm for we know I want shinga. Eh, I don't know what stupid bait we met. And I did write my first rhyme and came back and killed it. Yeah. And one thing about like that one thing that you are meant to do yeah. is even when you bump into it, even for a, a split second or a minute, you know this you is it. It just works. Yeah. yeah. So just that kind of performance, I don't know if it was two minutes or three minutes, yeah. I knew this is it. You know, I always wanted to be an accountant because of my dad. But at that or, very was moment... Was he an accountant? Yeah. Or he asked you to be one? He was. Okay. So at that very moment, it's almost like I realized that, but why do I even want to be an accountant? I suck at math. <laughs> you know, that sort of yeah. thing. Like in that very moment, I knew like this is it. And believe me, like back then, the whole Chingola, we only had two studios. Mm. The whole Copa Belt, I think there were less than four studios. Radio stations, I think it's just radio it. Ichengel, or that's mm. it, yeah. This is before Yai FM, before Flavor FM. Yeah. And the only people that you'd see, like, oh, uh, Fidesz Tika Tika. And even them, it was like later on, were glorious band. Oh, yeah. So at that particular point, you, you had no reference that, like, there's no person that you know that's actually doing big things in music. Because it's different, like, I want to watch Tampa TV, I want to watch them, you know, that sort true. of thing. Like, the, um, being exposed to actual people that you know doing amazing mm. things does something to you that watching someone like hey, Jay Z on TV or yeah. NBC won't do. So, from that background, but I still knew, like, this is it, you know? And uh, so we went to the. Um, after um, I did my like, performance on the final day, and obviously I became like a, a popular kid in school. Local celebrity. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Next term, there was this kid from a convent school who wanted to record a song. And someone just told me, at, ah, at our school we have this karapa who can put a hard verse in it. <clears throat> so <clears throat> a came, we had a chat about it and we went to the studio and I recorded like that was in 2002 when I recorded that first verse ever in a professional studio. Yeah. Before recording that, do I record that anyway? Um, a lot of people, even those who came before us would tell you like yeah. where X buzz sharp video. Yeah, I remember you know, it. Yeah. X yeah. Sharp. yeah. Yes. instrumento. Yes. Blank tape. And then when you play, you rap over the song. Yeah. Kwamba from intro to outro. Like you sing the whole song. <laughs> and then you get the same tape that you've recorded on. Yeah. Put it on this side and put another blank tape here and put backing vocals. <clears throat> and, put <laughs> and put backing vocals. Yo. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. if you need it like yeah. five vocals, it means you have to <laughs> do it five times. Anyway, from that to actually recording like a proper now song in a professional studio. Yeah. And the producer liked it so much that he told me like, yo, I like your verse on this song. I need you to come and work on your own song. Mm. And so, <clears throat> by then, the only reason why I never went to a studio to record this stuff is because uh, I couldn't make it. Yeah, there was no money. There was yeah. no money to pay for, for studio time. <clears throat> but so I got an opportunity to record like that one song. Obviously some song that you'll probably never hear about. Yeah. <clears throat> but I recorded that first song. And the producer liked it so much that he asked me to record a second one and a third one and the fourth one. That's how I started recording. Look at you. I think the first time I ever paid for like an actual recording, yeah. I could afford to pay. You know, I was already making money off my music. Yeah. But how my uh, how whole you making money? career took off. I don't know, push your How my whole career took off. <clears throat> no, I got you. I got you. He's explaining. <clears throat> Oh, this is going to be a very interesting interview, bro. 
and uh, my train of thought tends to my bad. If I, my bad. If I, that's so, cool. So the making of the money, yeah. <sighs> no, it's actually before making. We'll get there. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the first time I ever paid, yeah, it was at a point when I was already making money off the music that I could actually pay. Mm. So all this time, people kind of just used to see what I could do or what I could be. And I would record all this stuff for free. Of course, I had to put myself in positions where I was, um, I was, I would get this uh, free studio time. Yeah. For example, those same guys who recorded my first song, I just used to pester them and just be like a uh, errand boy for them. If it meant cleaning <laughs> the studio, or making them coffee, do it. Just so I you could get have the air like time, some, yeah. some studio time. time yeah. And even that same studio time. It's not like the guy's going to sit there and make a beat for you. Mm. Just like, oh, okay. I do promise that Patu is the one who can something. Okay, okay, okay. I'll come back after now. Computer ni. And I had to figure that sort of stuff out. You taught yourself <coughs> production. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Did That's you it. really though? What? Did you really? Yeah. If there's anyone out there who can claim uh, claim that they taught me, they should come out now. Speak but now. But you know how uh, I know you taught yourself? Uh -huh. Because your first few songs were shitty, man. The production quality. Not first few. Like a lot of uh, them. Uh, dude, so, uh, the production was terrible, especially the songs where you were sampling even American songs. songs. That are like smash hits even right now. <laughs> like when you listen to yeah. like, I think my first biggest song was like Mami Nose. Yeah. When you play that That stuff, song is like, distorted. It's distorted. Very distorted. Yeah. Another song that's a hit and distorted, Feeling, Feeling. Feeling, Feeling, Nangu yeah. Anching has got bass. So yeah, but it's okay. Like when it comes... Uh, and I'm speaking on behalf of Nangu DJs. Nangu <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't watch I'm, speak I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of DJs. <laughs> we always had a problem uh. as a DJ. You're playing Maki 2 songs. You could be playing American songs and, uh. you know, there's so much pressure from the fans. Uh. There was a crew of American people at Cozy Joe's where I used to DJ. Mm -hmm. I was raised in DJ. Whenever they came, they would want feeling, feeling to jam. Yeah. And you could actually see a rise in the sales at the bar when that song plays. So I used to get pressure from the manager sometimes. Was that Cozy Jersey? Yes. I owe them an invoice too. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> You've been mixing as a DJ. And the moment you have to mix in feeling, feeling, boy, you have to touch all the equalizers. Yeah. How much did that fuck up your speakers? Though? Dude, did you, you blow a couple yeah, speakers? I, I'm invoicing you for two speakers. <laughs> uh, they were so, Wafford, they were Titan, 15 inch. So, just 5,000 so, quacha each. So what yeah. I want to tell you is, yeah. is uh, speaking of how shitty the music was mm -hmm. back then, is um, I still have like the login details for like my first email address. <laughs> like yeah. stuff I opened like 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, Yahoo. Yahoo. UK. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, even now, I'd go back to like my sent mail yeah. and see like the songs I used to send to like Crisis, Black Moon, Do, Smooth IK, and different, different people. Yeah. And all these guys, like they never responded to any of those, like the mail. And it's not like back then they were receiving like a media or an email. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they just ignored yeah. you. <laughs> so, but when I listen to that, yeah, I know why they never replied. Like it was shitty. <laughs> no, like I know, like I wouldn't sign me if I received that <laughs> joint. You know what I mean? Yeah. You keep dropping everything, bro. You right there? You drop <laughs> yeah. your, your rent over keys. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I know, I know you heard what I say. You were taken. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. I'm having a Copa story here. We'll tell you when we get to Lusaka. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, uh, ah, this is going to be, this is going to be heated. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Have your moment right now, man. <laughs> so, yeah. so, uh, what was I saying? So I know, I know why they never got back to me. Yeah. Like the music was really bad and it's okay. And the only thing that maybe I'd blame all those people who never took me seriously back then for yeah. is for not being futuristic or not seeing what this thing could be, you know, not noticing potential. Yeah. And sometimes you, you come across an artist and you know, like, yeah, the There's music potential, is yeah. shitty, but uh, if this kid could do A, B, C, D, ah, they would make magic. You know? Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah. Um, you, nowadays you see me like work with a lot of young 
upcoming artist is yeah. because of that. One, because I know what it would have meant for me back then. Two, there are so many people who pitched, who, when they pitched in. Uh, to help you grow yeah, your from, career? Yeah, yeah people, people pitched in, yeah. Yeah, it ain't no it, it literally took a village to raise this man. To raise this man. Yeah. So it cut you off. So we've got amazing food in front of us. We've got the chef. Come through, my man. Chef Temwa. So he, he wants to just tell us what, what's in front of us. We don't need you having allergies when you start eating. Chef Temwa. Market two said the only thing he doesn't eat is eggplants. Impua. That's it. He eats everything else. Yeah. You don't eat impua? I, I plans love impua. impua. I love not I'm eggplants. I'm eggplants. <laughs> It actually comes from a family of eggplants. Yeah, they're both, they're both eggplants. Eggplants, man. Yeah. Impua comes from a family of eggplants. They're the same thing. Okay. Only one is bigger. No, no, no. The... Let the chef speak. <laughs> impua comes from the family of eggplants. Eggplants, correct. So, it means that impua is eggplant. <laughs> ah, we. I like no, that. You're right. No. You're right. In so, your, 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 comes from a family of cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Let him explain. So, yeah. let, let, me, let me explain. A lion <laughs> and a cat. Yeah. So today we have here um, a slow cooked chicken satay dipped in a peanut, spicy peanut sauce. So on allergies, you've got peanut butter. Um, and then on another one, we've got shellfish, which is prawn. And that is a Asian feel of prawn on a cross tinny. And then we finished it off with halloumi cigars, smoked halloumi cigars. And that is wrapped with a rocket leaf just to give it a bit of a texture and venezois. Now explain in simple terms. <laughs> You've got prawns. <laughs> <laughs> but um, all you know, we, yes, there is a base of um, mayonnaise. And as well, we've got a bit of um, goat cheese, which is locally produced here in Zambia. So that combination in terms of dairy, please just be aware of that. But halloumi is there as well as the dairy. And that's about it. All right, cool. Sweet bon stuff. appetit. Chef Temo, thanks a lot. Do people normally... Oh, I don't have a mic. Do people <laughs> normally order this? Do people normally order this when... When they come and what do they ask for if they want this? Because this looks very fancy. So this is actually tailor-made today. Oh, for um, us? Yeah. Wow. So, yes. Um, Are we for allowed other... to speak for it? Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's the best part when you yeah. hear the feedback. Thanks. Um, but overall, we tailor-make menus accordingly mm. to what people would want. Um, yeah. So if you want impua, it'll be there. Oh, egg Egg, plants. Eggplants. <laughs> Chef Temwa, thank you. Thanks a lot for this. Cheers. So far, it's so good. good. It's good. Thank you very much. Um, Marketu, as we still talk about, you know, your your coming up in the game, I'd like to take you back even further, man. Like on the song Nangoban Shinge, you talk about how one parent dies when you're in grade what five, and the other dies when you're in grade eight. I'm trying to understand what life became for you. What life was like. Especially after you know losing the second parent. Mm. Okay, so obviously I was raised by a stepmom. Um I should over and that stepmother and if we this wasn't the case. Oh wow. <coughs> <coughs> so anyway, um sometimes when you're young, yeah. even when your stepmom disciplines you when they're supposed to discipline you, it just feels like she's only doing it because she's a stepmom. Yeah. You know what I mean? So regardless how nice she was, there'll always be moments that will make you feel like being mistreated and ABCD. Yeah. But in hindsight, when you look back, you can't really pinpoint it, like, the one thing that was so wicked. Mm. So obviously I had a rough um, childhood growing up with my stepmom, but um, it wasn't really bad. It wasn't really bad. Um, so yeah, um, I was born in Luansha. Yeah. Uh, mid 80s, we know, <coughs> yeah, Wikipedia, yeah. <laughs> early 80s, bro. Mid, mid, how old are you? Do your math, my aren't you, uh, <laughs> do your math, mid 80s, 2022. <laughs> aren't you, aren't you 38? I was born on the 10th of October 1984. 
Yeah, yeah that's early. 14 hours. Yeah, that's, below, that's before 85. <laughs> Precisely so around 14 early. hours. No, that's mid. Mid is 85. Mid is 85. Yeah. Like right day. Mid. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, so. <laughs> you so. and K plus same as like, We both did uppercuts to do your math, huh? So. Uh, we didn't like college very much. So, yeah. So, anyway. Um, I was born um, in Luansha, Thompson Hospital. Mm. And um, the beauty about how my life has really turned out is when I was young, I lived on both sides of the coin. Okay. The time I was born, my mom was like a primary school teacher. My dad was starting out. He was like a young accountant. Yeah. And by the time my dad died, he had like climbed up the ranks and he was like... Incredible. Um... Uh, branch manager at Indo Zambia Bank wow. or whatever. Mm. Wow. So <clears throat> I saw all that stuff, like from just living in a two bedroom house in Kamirenda and Luansha yeah. to like living in an actual manager, branch manager's house. Bowling. Like, uh, yeah. We still in Luansha then, we moved? <clears throat> so we moved from Luansha to Ndola, then to Lusaka. So okay. when my dad died in uh, Lusaka. when Lusaka. That's how come I can speak a bit of them, but because I think we we, and we lived like a, like a <laughs> <laughs> we lived like a three four years in Lusaka. Mm. The reason I can speak English and um, to all the parents out there who encourage their kids to speak more English than their native tongue language yeah. should be ashamed of yourself. My dad was one of those people who believed <laughs> You know what? It was almost like English was a measure of intelligence. Yeah, I hate not, people who yeah. think like that. Yeah, that I know sense. so many people who are smart and they've never been to school and they can't speak a word in English. But they're so really true. smart people. So true. So anyway, <clears throat> my dad was like, just emphasize that we spoke English at home. My dad too. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's how come I was really panel beaten to speak English. I yeah. remember Janimbi. You know, you know Janimbi, right? From yeah. Yeah. Janimbi said. Show me any car dealership where you walk in, speak very good English, and you walk out with a brand new car. Voila. Your English don't make sense. What was it like in your home growing up? I mean... So anyway. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me just okay. finish, oh, right, finish this, the this point. bit. Yeah. So uh, when my dad died, we were in Osaka, and then we had to move to my dad's youngest brother in Chingola. Mm. My dad's youngest brother was um, Ishmael. What, what I'm a proud one, as mine. The seventh grade. You're in the seventh grade when he mm-hmm. passed. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, from, and this is like 1999. I think I was 15. Mm-hmm. I believe a man becomes a, uh, a boy becomes a man between the ages of 15 and 25. Yeah. Really, that's when you're falling in love for the first time. This is when you're hitting puberty. And this is when, like, different, different, you're going through this transformation. And I think between 15 and 25 that's when i went to the copper belt and started literally from square one because um um my uncle my dad's youngest brother was like um was probably like my age now yeah now imagine someone who's like me uh takes up these two kids uh, yeah. and start taking care of them and ABCD. so um my whole um, like high school was the day I First of all, now shut the kusunga coffee. They are just doing you a favor. You can't afford to mess up. Yo, now upona or lo yo. Yeah. I was just worried about going to school. No, the day I knew I was bati. You know, baranda chumulandu mume or dimvo. Chumulandu mume means sometimes even when you stay away from trouble, there's just a way that trouble follows you. Oh, so, Murphy's yeah. law. Shit that's <laughs> supposed to go wrong. We'll just go wrong. wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there were times when I would get in trouble in school and they'd ask me to. Quite a few people would dafe who do want to be past street. I'm panga go for something. I start to present to school. That's your parent mm. for the day. Yeah. Kunga and dangwa vipsha. They have no single report of me being in trouble in school. Clean shit. <laughs> because, like. Yeah. These guys were already taking care of me and doing me a favor. I wouldn't afford to just 
do all these things. So I was telling you I was I sucked at math, yeah. but I never failed a single test because I just knew that hello. Hello. I was in Sunga got a team point. You know that sort of yeah. thing. So um I was really really forced to be responsible and uh more independent even um at an early age. I I asked about uh what the scenario was like because you 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 guys are like when it comes to families in music mm-hmm. you're the most famous family in music you chef Toela I'm trying to imagine what it was like in that home mm-hmm. growing up were you all I I remember I, I know you mentioned that uh, the rapping came in high school and yeah. you know that variety show whatever but after that did chef you also discover this in him like when you guys were young and what kind of what what, what was the scenario like in your home growing up So obviously that thing I was telling you about for us uh, writing lyrics and what yeah. it was all of us doing it. In fact, my brother my older brother was the one who attempted rapping even before I did. Oh. Yeah. He would write all these to my whack raps. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So even then when he used to rap, I never felt like this is something we'd do now. Yeah. Wow. Um music has always been around us. My dad really liked music. In fact, um enum fiash kwali ofati alikwata ma record like dube alikwata rumba arege yeah 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 different uh, uh, things music was always around the house and then you you blow up say if we say mid 2000s they also would chip in and say 2005 is the only mid 2000 like 2007 you sort of blow up and a few years after that we start hearing of Sheffy Rumor has it that you're not keen on having your siblings join in a music career. Is that, is this true? No, man. I yeah. I recorded Chef's like first official release. There's this song called Yeah, my yo, you've probably never heard of it, but It sounds shitty, so no. It was dope. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> I put Chef on the yeah. um, I'm Zambian hip hop this Oh, n- nobody who ever heard that song forgets how Chef came in. And I remember him being accused of no, he's trying to sound like the older brother, but yeah. you know, if you really knew Zambian hip hop at that point, you could tell this is who. Mm-hmm. And we all never forget Ning Kaba. Yeah, so even Nenba. before Chef yeah. was like out there out there like that, he was in like Sekopono ke Chance. Yeah. A couple yeah. times I did. Yeah. So, I was like even just Toela 10 years ago I used to go and get Toela from home from yeah. school and take her to the studio she's recorded like in um two of my songs like yeah 10 years ago like the oh. song called um shipwe shipwe hands in the put your hands in the air. yeah yeah, yeah. she's the one who sings i feel like spending no mm. money Yeah. Uh she recorded another joint with Chef called um Love You, the one that he sings for his Love You. Yeah. I will always Yeah, that's Toyla. What was the sibling rivalry like though when you guys were growing up? Um there's only like two years uh between me and Chef. So ah, obviously that, there was a lot of fighting in that house. There was a lot of fighting. Uh, but kind yeah. of sometimes kula go mfie miaka. Ba muma fedi mu fedi akwe bati no rwati na boku pidi kitamo na vatawe. Aba ba kudwa. <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah um yeah. brothers have especially like typical african brothers have yeah. like a, a sort of relationship where like um and i guess it's, it's it extends to even just friends <clears throat> if two guys hold hands or hug it all oh, the way hug, yeah it feels like mm, hey, hey what are you doing there has to be a hand in between yeah yeah, yeah. guys yeah. do this uh, what, what uh, up? Uh, yeah so <clears throat> Um even brothers or siblings have this thing where you would even think like I'm closer to someone else than I am to my brother. Mm. You know, the I love you but I'll never tell you that. Yeah. You know, the if someone beat him when he was young, like when he was young, someone yeah. beat him. Ah, that was beef for the whole family. Else wouldn't know should, about that. You never sister, right? Yeah, all of us sisters. Your sister, so he wouldn't know about what yeah. we're talking about. So you mo babidi mulalwa, but ngo fove na ba muma. That's huh? another issue. Yeah. yeah. So um I guess that's always been there. And I think um for the most part um in terms of competition obviously slap is, is by far like um what do you call this thing? We've always had this rivalry or whatever. But Sheffy is yeah. like Oh, 
Uh, eh, Makitu wala rapa eh, muka dibati. <laughs> Badi mufu wapo mwa echo akwe. And those were like the first uh, yeah. few times when I felt, started feeling like, you know what? I need to pull up my stock and see. Hey, this kid is not coming well. It's not coming well at all. Yeah. And then um, there are what are called measuring sticks in music. Yeah. Where you, it's either you are looking at your to my countdowns on different charts. Yeah, radio to, stations yeah, and all. Yeah. See if your song is not there. If your song is not anywhere. Ah, uh, you need to put out something, something. Yeah. But also, real time is when the MC at the, a gig is saying, In the house we have Peter Sensakase. <laughs> In the house we have Makitu. <laughs> and then they said, In the house we have Shafi. Well, the roof came down. Dust everywhere. And then I just noticed, Oh, shit. He has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there, there are a few moments where yeah. you realize like, oh, this is actually happening. And sometimes um, uh, you should be careful to know like someone is taking my spot now. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, but you should, be, you should always yeah. be aware. And uh, people always say this thing, which is, uh, partly correct, but people always say this thing where they say, you no, know, I'm my own competition and me, I just want to be better. Better than I was last Sir, year and whatever. This is a competition and there We're are other race. competitors. Yes. The, other co- the deal that you are supposed to get, believe me, there's some other kid who's working twice as hard and put in to get know, the same mean. deal. And yeah. the thing is, they would even steal from your playbook <clears throat> and then just improve on it. So, so yeah, um, at some point, of course, uh, it's always been a balance between um, me really being proud of what my siblings have been able to achieve, yeah. but also recognizing that, oh, so now this is the guy to beat. Your own brother. I mean. Yeah, and, and it's okay to feel like that. Yeah. You didn't have a moment where you pulled him to the side and said, nigga, you know Cain killed Abel, right? oh man uh no man like at some point you're the one taking care of your family so if you can get one person who's helping you do that lighten the load yeah you know what i mean like um now we have three people who are actually making uh, money off this music in the family it's it's great man um there's never been a time where i really felt like jealous like oh snap like I don't think. If I did, I didn't recognize it. Mm. You know, you haven't answered my question, right? Ask, sir. No, I asked you when you said you got to a point where you were now making money to pay for your own studio time. Mm-hmm. So I asked, how were you making money? Okay. So in the music industry, obviously, right now, people make money via um, three main avenues. One yeah. is gigs, which is like one plus one. Shinga, Kwisa Mbako Kuno, so much and you go there and sing. Two is royalties. Um the most common ones are like Boom Play or Duma Spotify Shan Those guys like, actually pay you. Yeah. Ah. Boom play more than all these other streaming platforms. Zem Cops, no? Every now and then you get a check. But Once in a while. Yeah. yeah. I don't know anybody who ever got a check more than fifty P from there. But then there yeah. used to be um, we used to have spice and now they are Mziki. So they control color back tones. When you call somebody there's always like a oh, Zambian song playing, yeah. They'll charge you like two kwacha to yeah. have it as your color back tone and the company will keep two kwacha and you would keep the other one kwacha. The company will keep one kwacha and you keep the other one kwacha. Mm. <coughs> so those are um, um oh and endorsements. So three main avenues. Okay. okay. So three main avenues. <laughs> Obviously, when you're starting out, um, and for us, even before I started getting hired for gigs, yeah, I'd learned how to produce. Remember, so we moved from um, WOC, the like studio that gave me my first shot, yeah, to Zilile Media Inc. to Danger, Danger Zone. Zone, where so you Danger guys Zone blew was up now. Our thing. Yeah. So even before I had like a hit song or whatever, whatever, yeah. I used to produce songs for. Almost everybody in Chingola. And then, you know, Chris Jenner, the Kardashians, gets like a 10% from all her children when whatever, you know, uh, business they get into or from the show as well. Do you, I mean, you, you sort of brought your siblings into the game. Do you also get a cut from whatever they make? No. 
totally independent. Bad business. <laughs> bad business. Bad, bad business. <laughs> so, so what I'm getting into yeah. now is, and um, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but yes, since it's should. the Z just podcast, a, just, just a three yep. of us. Since it's the Z podcast, talk about it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, the thing with Alpha Entertainment <clears throat> is was almost the same thing with with Danger Zone, where it's like ten artists in under one label, all trying to push and. Um, maybe let me just take you back to Danger Zone. Yeah. Danger Zone was me, Afunika, Baska, Baska, Joe Boy, and of course our CEOs, uh, this guy called Mr. Yokschio Koma Vayoka. You are Yoka! Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the guy who bought all the equipment, yeah. rented us a place, and, <clears throat> and we started Danger Zone Studios. And the thing about, that's why I don't, I don't uh, get it when artists like young artists really really just want a feature and act like that thing is going to save their career yeah it, it won't it won't and it's not an endorsement from wherever is not going to really it's not guaranteed that it's going to change anything because at danger zone our first song that blew up was uh, i love you man dandy crazy uh, yeah dandy that song had backing <coughs> vocals by Afunika. It was produced by Baska Baska. It had me. Uh, you on that song? No, I made the video for the song. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it had like everybody chip in to make that one, one song, song because yeah. we understood that that guy is going to be our ticket out of this shit. Home. When he goes through. This guy is going to be our ladder out of this place. Yeah. And do you remember when Dan used to pull up? He would pull up with the like Kamin bus. All of us. <laughs> Yeah, 15 upcoming artists before he goes on stage. And that song had no yo Shanuko producer or Pisha Wala. No Just feature, all of you Wala. upcoming, yeah. All of us upcoming. The next big song was Baska Baska. Uh, Zuba. Zuba. Yanga. Yeah. Obviously, we had in between, we had two more songs. Yeah. And then he put it on Dandy Crazy's song. Exactly. I think that was a major fuck up, man. No, man. I thought so. That's what we did. Like, so, so that song is like a yeah. bonus track on Dandy's album. It was album. the last song on Dandy's yeah. album. Yeah, I remember it's that bonus much. Bonus track on yeah. Dandy's album. On Baska's album, guess what? Yeah. The bonus track is Afunika's Malinso Malinso song. Which also propelled Afunika's career. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After Afunika's um, yeah. album came out, guess what? The last song was Chico uh, Wise's. So that was like a deliberate policy to Ah. promote each other. Well, the way we saw it was from a royalty perspective. Like, you know, if he put your biggest song, you give it to this nigga. But everybody understood, like, especially back then, that Muntungaf Miao Bam, every song there, people will listen to every song. Not now, where you. It's one song. None can album. But back then, people used to listen to like the whole project. Remember how Danny would have his whole album on the top ten charts? Uh-huh. Album. Five and five instrumentals uh, uh, on the album. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like Danny, when you would put out like promo songs, yeah. the promo song would be like a minute long. You oh, remember? really? You remember like I don't remember the album that. No? comes out, you'd put out these snippets of like two songs oh, um, yeah. of the album. Yeah. Come think of it, yeah. Damn. But you don't remember that. No, I do remember that. Now, now that he mentions it, it would actually be like, even Yakumbuyo came out like an intro, for, like yeah. a little intro thing, which would even play on radio. Imagine that. Yeah. So, anywho. Um, I'm, uh, we're, we're coming now to, this is, uh, I think we're now in 2009. Okay, well, so, uh, yeah. hold on, before I lose this thought. So, yeah. what I was getting at is, sorry, I do this thing where I start explaining and then... I start then you come to the point now. So, <laughs> I've been sober for a while. So, uh, the, the, like, I've, I was trying to uh, make you understand how Alpha Entertainment was set up yeah. such that um, I was unable to make money off it is because after Danger Zone, I set up a similar studio where I was trying to help, <coughs> of course, even myself, but I, I made my own group now with uh, Cream Dollar, Sheffy, and, and Pilato, and different, different guys. Yeah. And together would build an empire. We actually did to some extent. But all of us were just literally helping each other blow up. Mm. Now what I'm doing now, 
I'm going into management and I'm setting up a completely independent company mm-hmm. because that other one is too corrupt. They told me you were number you were later 30%. <laughs> yeah. So now we're setting up a completely new company and this company will be run like a business obviously right. where um, there's a percentage that is agreed upon and the label is going to do ABCD for you and in return it gets <coughs> this much. I, and I think that's what's really missing. We don't have um, people who really treat this like a business mm. where umuntu nga stuff of it ah uyo kukot I don't think we have scenarios like that. Most people mm. claim they are signed under different different companies but really they have <coughs> gigs and the company doesn't get anything yeah you know what i mean they yeah. forfeit um different different contracts and people they're not taken to court or anything mm. but i really want to set up a company that's going to be run like a business at what point in your life do you realize you've blown you've grown in the industry now um i like to say i i, I kind of made it in life a bunch of times in my life mm, okay you know like um obviously when you start now just set like a very realistic goal even when you shoot for the stars you know what's real and what's mm. just like fantasizing so <clears throat> at first all i ever wanted to do was just record a song that would play on radio yeah you know? and when we did that guess what wanted to re- record a song that was like number one on radio yeah and when that happened even before it happens you kind of are exposed to what your limits are or yeah what's possible so um i was already chasing to have like the number one song in the country and even when that happened and i think this is like in 2012 yeah um when i won like um song of the year uh, for that same I mean it was a joint I did with Afunika yeah is I already knew like yeah I have this number one song in the country but I need to be the number one artist, artist in the country yeah so I think um, every now and then your goals tend to Change, tend to you know. dream bigger than you initially thought like this was the limit um, at some point I felt like yo we need to bring home a Grammy yeah you know what i mean and um in 2014 i went to big brother because specifically i knew like this is the biggest platform on the continent and if i get myself on that platform guess what i'm exposing myself to the whole continent and yeah to to help my career but they don't know not land up where i talent and all that stuff can only get you so far (coughs) after a certain point yeah when people know you but after i can number Money is in bongo. Yeah. yeah. Watch a good morning Zambia. My name is Chanda. Nominate me for best voiceover artist at the Zikomo Awards. From Zambia to Africa to the world, we're going somewhere in Cameroon, somewhere in Ethiopia, somewhere in Kenya, somewhere in Uganda, somewhere in Rwanda, somewhere in South Africa. Help me to tell our story. Click on the link in the bio. Scroll down and click on Best Voice Over Artist of the Year. Enter your name and your email. Now enter my name, Chanda Mianda. Enter my country, Zambia. Click on Submit. Come on now. We're going somewhere at the Zikomo Awards. I asked the question, at what point did you feel you had arrived, like you were a big name? Let me, let me remind you of a point that where I was on radio that day when the news came, mm. when, you, when the news broke. And it's only then when I saw you on the news, did I realize how big the brand Makitu had become? Mm. When you got arrested in 2011 mm. for copper theft. I'm not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> Why? Mm. <laughs> and it's surprising how I was telling our producer call about like, have you included this in uh, the while she was preparing for this interview have you included the time you got arrested he got arrested like very few people know that Marketo was actually yeah, in prison for copper know. theft very few people know and yeah. you know like this is idani few mufe zona and few mufe akobati kadembe book one day i was i was watching you know like um, yeah. cuz 
like I was so pro Sata. Like I was so pro yeah, Sata. Sata yeah. was in, in all you. my music. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like being. Ask them. It's like, yeah, it's like being yeah. pro HH last year. <coughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like everything. I, I literally used to call myself Michael Chilfer Sata Jr. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, obviously, Sata was opposition and ABCD. Yeah. Ah, Wait, you stole copper without knowing he had stolen copper and you went to prison for it? Uh-huh. Wow. So sometimes, like, what, what? would happen, like, um, the last couple of years, like, I'd see, like, Pilato put out a song and I'm like, I'd be, like, almost afraid for him. He's about to go through the same. You're like, scared for him. I've been through this. Like, I know how this f- movie This movie ends, ends yeah. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, I can't talk too much about it. But yeah. So, <coughs> you were given the charge of copper theft. Yeah. How were you picked up? How, how did the whole thing, you know, how did you get the news that you'd actually been stolen copper? So, you know, you've watched um, The Hangover. Yeah. So, Which this, one? whichever one. So, these guys wake up in the morning and yeah. then you just, they just start telling them, ah, yesterday, ah, this side, no, eh, That's exactly. the first one. Yeah. Oh, that's the first one? Yes. I think, well, all, all, <laughs> all of them have, have got a bit of that element. No. Where you wake up and you can't... No. All of them have that bit really? of that element. No. Okay, it's part one. Yeah, it's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I, what uh, kind of hangover was... I, show- I wouldn't want to be in the same uh, class as you in primary school. You know that. What <laughs> kind of hangover was showing in the copper belt? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, back it to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I went to court and uh, they had like five witnesses. Who saw you still? Who the saw court? me. Like they saw me. Oh, man. It was, it's, it was a movie, wow. man. So and you didn't steal a copper? I wish I'd stolen the copper. <laughs> also, they made this shit up. <sighs> So yeah, this I'll, I'll write one day. I'll write a book and, and we'll do a whole movie which about is it. Which is which? What? <laughs> I'm saying which is which? Did did they make that shit up? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I've been trying to tell you the whole time. Don't try, nigga. Yeah, but with the five witnesses though. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. So they made <laughs> that it up. These guys had five witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Who saw me steal this copper? Yeah. Wait. Wh- did you supposedly steal it? No, they had like one hour testimony each. Uh. Like, and you know the funny thing is these guys, I, didn't, I don't know if they didn't do their research or their due diligence or whatever, whatever. Their stories they didn't were, coordinate were their story. all over the place. It was not corroborated then, properly. The yeah. second thing is the day they alleged that I actually did this thing, yeah. I, thank God, I had a gig in Choman, 2,000 people saw me The other side of the country. The yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. But let's be real, though. Mm. Let's take away the bling, the glasses... The fancy clothes. Mm. Someone that looks like you mm. gets accused of stealing copper. You kind of fit the description. Exactly. Though. Exactly. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Ah, wait. You, you look like that person. Like if, if shit goes missing in the supermarket, mm. people will be like, ah, did you ask that one day? Ah, wait. You should be Yeah. And you know how petty, like, uh, yeah. the prosecutor was. Mm-hmm. He came with a uh, Akadim uh, Bakanon. Like with a, your music yes in court and put it there and said um uh your honor your honor i know this is very unconventional but this is important to the case <laughs> demo pondo demo pondo real talk real talk i'll write a movie yeah. about that man i'll write a movie about that yeah so um yeah. um after the first trial, I take I, I get taken to prison, and I like to tell the story because it's 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 really like um, like I remember it like yesterday. So mm-hmm. the thing about like anyway, oh you you look like good boys, so maybe you've never experienced this. But the thing I've about never. any runnings with the police, I've never. Ganaba kui katafiba police. The next thing to do is come out. You know, you are chilling if you are in a police cell. 
the panic and the anxiety and all that restlessness happens yeah. when you have a call out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's when you can sleep. That's when you can sleep. When you're in the chooks, uh, we'll make a plan, you'll come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this story just kept on getting worse from the time that I they I got arrested. It just kept on getting worse. But finally, um I was coming out of court and I was going towards this Kasalanga and I was just going to go to prison and would sort out the bail requirements and I'd come out because we had asked for bail. And in, according to Zambian law, you are innocent till proven guilty. Yeah, true. So I was walking to this Kasalanga. Presumption of innocence, yeah. And so people always do this thing, especially like those chaps who already came to prison. We never have a court, but they wake it up. Uh-huh. Where they encourage you and tell you dumb shit like, <laughs> so I was like encouraging you. So I get into this thing. And first of all, I'm looking at this man who's, because I you get into the Kasalanga seat and I'm seated opposite this older man. Sentenced to six months. For somebody who doesn't speak Kopala, Elson, Kasalanga is that truck where they put prisoners from the prison to the court and courts to back to, back right, to prison? Yeah. yeah, we call it Kasalanga on the court. Well, I think even in the soccer it's called Kasalanga, right? It is? Yeah. So I, I sit, I take the seat and I see this older man who's like crying. And I believe him dad each dish fit. Yeah. Sentenced to three months in prison. Damn. And I get a bit emotional and I look back. Yeah. Moral support. <laughs> Moral support. Moral support. <laughs> yeah, so we we're talking about the Kasalanga before we were interrupted there. So you you spoke about the man who was uh, getting uh, three months for stealing a dish and you were trying to console him. And then uh, a crew comes for moral support. I think that's where yeah, we ended, yeah. Uh, I was telling you, whatever is the Basca Basca, Yellow Man, Pilato, like yeah. a bunch of artists were there to support me. And I saw this uh, woman who's like, a mother to us because she used yeah. to come to the studio and um help us clean or whatever yeah um i got the guy restaurant punch so what about in a lunch of us to provide she was literally like a mother to us she was crying you know and um they say women cry three types of tears mm. there's tears of sorrow tears of joy and tears of shame. And those were tears of shame, my nigga. <laughs> Which movie was this again? And you know, like... What was that? <laughs> Which movie was this? <laughs> I don't know, but I know a fourth type. And you know, like... <laughs> and you know, like, yeah. for real, though, like, when you see a woman cry like that, especially someone who consider like, a mother figure, yeah, it, it changes your life. Something in you just changes. So even if I didn't do this thing, but I knew at that very moment I had to be a little responsible with my life yeah so um when i i, th- I think i spent like a week in in that kasem uh, in that same peter singongo prisons yeah. when i came out guess the song we put out first ah uh, you came out what uh, this is late 2011 yeah. at how 2010 or already i can't remember Manchinge. oh crap and yes just election period yeah that was the reason why that song resonated with a lot of people because it had that history tied to it. Like, yeah. oh, this guy just went through this whole thing and then and just came out and this is the first song. That Michael Sata Jr. And then Michael Sata had just won that year's election. This is before he wins. This is before. immediately But then after. It, sort of, it sort of becomes like a campaign song in yeah. that period, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, I was saying, for me, that's a period where I knew how big your name had grown because the day you came out is what really made the news. Yeah. The crowd. Dude, it looked like a public rally when this guy came out of prison, man. Yeah. A huge crowd showed. How did that make you feel, though? Oh, man. Like, every now and then you you yeah. get to my situations that make you realize, like, oh, this is bigger than me. And that was just one of those moments. Was it the first one? I think it was the first one. I don't I, think so. You know, like yeah. um, my the beauty about um, just how my journey has been is yeah. I had a song that was big in the house. Fe, munga ndefe ba duishi ba fe. I made ba de pianga ba de imba kuno ba duishi. Then to a song that was like big in my streets, like uh, 
Sanga Lubale Shapaka Sido Padia to a song that was big in the whole world. Oh, so everything. Because remember, like, even before songs like uh, 2010, we had yeah. songs like Life Here and Dinner Happy Time. That was like in 20. With Dandy Crazy. I love that song. Man. So we had yeah. like a couple of songs that led to Nangu Banching. There were yeah. a couple of songs that like were big, big. Yeah, yeah. I tell 2010 was like in 2010. And yeah. that whole thing happened in, 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 in 2011. 2011. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to my songs, but yeah, that was just one one moment where I felt like, oh, snap, this is really bigger than me. Like, um, even from that moment onwards, you saw me really just become a little responsible with the content that I'd put out. I think the market to post that experience yeah. and the, is is very different from the because I think that market to realize the lawyer could use your use your music against you in court. <laughs> I couldn't really use yeah. it because, like, I had a genius of a lawyer on yeah. my side. Shout out to Mr. Magu Buichimuka. Mm. Just the name itself, man. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But that's what's currently happening right now. Um, those two guys, I think it's Yak Tag. <coughs> yeah. Who is in jail and is most likely going to be in jail for life. They are using his lyrics against, against him. The same thing happened to Bobbish Murder. Mm, you yeah, remember Bobbish yeah, Murder? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, already judges uh, since the beginning of hip hop so, have always been against the so genre. You know what I mean? So obviously, if you're going to narrate the story like this is what happened, ABC, D, yeah. obviously they're going don't to be use a dumbass that. and say stuff but that I happened. I don't right? think they're going to use it like, like literally testimony. Yeah, no, it just helps the jury decide, really. But it's not submissive was. Evidence, evidence no. Yeah, no, but yeah, no. but if if you did it though, then it's gonna work against you. If you did it, like the Bobbish murder thing, yeah. Because with Bobby, the, he the actually narrated decide, how but he it's did not it. Not like they're going to say here. You say this. this no, of course this, I understand this, that. This, yeah, it's I not an that. admission of guilt. But right, I get it. You had, you had some issues with uh with Slep D. Yeah, that was about the same period. Yeah, and I only one hour narration. <laughs> But Slap was here, right? Did you guys talk to him? Yeah, that? yeah, we did. Ah, so I no, 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 we didn't talk about the beef. We didn't talk about you, though. Oh, really? No. It's pretty much this. Oh, it, it was on the other thing. Okay, anyway, the <clears throat> short story to this, and I know yeah. it won't do the story justice, but just for the sake of clarity, it's me and Slap were cool even before the beef, man. Like, uh, um, that, that's yeah. how beefs work. You're cool before the beef, um, when the beef comes. I loved what he was doing. Like I was really like a student of the game. I loved Tommy D. That's why sometimes when Tommy is, says stuff about me, I'm like, guy, like you inspired me, bro. Yeah. Like at this particular point, I shouldn't even be able to say anything back, man. Just out of respect that I have for you, man. I'm not afraid to say or embarrassed or too proud or too big headed to say people inspired me. A bunch of people inspired me. <coughs> Tommy is one of them. Uh, Mr. VZLV is one of them. Like a bunch of people inspired me. So anyway, <clears throat> um, I was cool with um, Slap. In fact, at one point, Slap was managed by um, Sync. Shout out to Sync Sounds. Sync Sounds, whatever touched was gold back then. He yeah. was with Peterson when <clears throat> Peterson made Munyaole. He was slapping yeah. like Sync. Anyway, at some point, Sync used to manage... Uh, my Lusaka shenanigans, and at the same time, he used to manage slap. At one of those uh, born and bred awards, we actually even went together in yeah. one car to the awards. Anyway, the following year, um, I was backstage and I just <clears throat> put out that song called um, Ati 2010. This is like in 2010. Yeah. Um, in 2009, obviously. Uh, these guys had won to my awards, 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 and I thought the right song was put out was, yo, I'm coming. In 2010, I'm coming. You know what in I mean? 2009, that song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in 2010, they win again, like Slap and Raf and ABCD. And Raf is backstage telling me like, hey, I'm 2010, I'm 2010. You know what I'm thinking? Yeah, this guy's a fool. He's a clown. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're just joking about it. And then, so Slap wins this um, video of the year um, for, I think, 
joint he did with PJ or something. And he goes on stage and says that very thing. And mind you, like these guys were just making fun of me backstage. So <laughs> even when he says it on stage, it don't mean nothing to me. It's yeah. just like I heard that stuff backstage. So I even go home, chill, and then check on Facebook and just see like it's comments pe- and inbox. It's all people are talking about that. Like, did you hear what that kid said? <laughs> ah, you might. If you need to put out a song, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh yeah, if we don't have Mbappé or Mbappé, and that same um, <coughs> night, I went to the Copa Belt. Um, the next day, we recorded a song and shot a video on the same day. The next day, it was all over the street in Lusaka, Shan, Shan, Shan Everybody. all over. Yeah, and the thing that's how come me and Slap even now. Wait, what song was this? No, I'm Zambian hip hop. Oh, okay, okay. Was well, so were you hitting back a slap? No, it really hit me back. Like I took the first shot. <sighs> like obviously after um, that whole statement he yeah. made. Uh, but you say well, the statement didn't bother you. It's, it's the people's comments. So people's comments said, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes Fragile you just you 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 know like what song to put up. Like when you just read the mood, you know what song to put up. Because mind you, this music thing we make is not for you really. It's for the people. So um, what keeps your heart in it and keeps you passionate about the music is the fact that you you make it the way you would want mm. and there's a bit of you in I, I can sing on the Kadlindula, Rumba, Hip Hops and there's still it still sounds like a Makitu song that's one thing I've I've kept a bit of me in there but for the most part it's for the people you give the people what they want to hear alright so you put mm. out this song the song mm. is huge you took the first shot and he responded to it yeah he put out this song called uh, what's that hammer song? Yeah, the DJ. And I can't remember the song though. Terrible as DJ. Huh? How are we having the Chinochaka? Chinochaka. There you go. Which one? You guys should be ashamed of yourself. Chinochaka. And he calls himself a DJ. Dude, I was I was deep into my Coppola roots then. You know what I mean? <laughs> and how how are the how are the how are the punches in that song? They were hard, man. They were hard. Um, anyway, so the the reason why me and Slab, me and Slab actually took a picture today. Earlier I today. saw that yeah. when you were saying chilling with the retirees. Could you have a pension? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me and Slab can actually chill like this because yeah. it, of course, everybody said like the nastiest stuff they could say, but we had limits. It was, it had class in it. Mm, you know, it was clean, mean, clean yeah, beef. Yeah. It, we we even just did a whole countrywide tour of Magdu versus Slap D and made a lot of money out of that stuff. So um of course, like it was emotional and every time <coughs> I'd listen to that song, it would hurt me and go in studio and record another joint. But it wasn't to a point where it became physical or was like I really felt some sort of actual hate. Mm. Of course not. Do you believe there's lines you shouldn't cross in a beef? Of course, and I can't sing a, a, a song and start talking about your kids and stuff like that. It's just certain things. You but you know, say. they say all is fair in love and war. You can tell me how to react. I can. All, all is, is fair in love, love and war. war. All is fair. No, You've never heard man. that before. Now, kuna nkane na kuyu kreniyo kubadi shivat. You can't use biomedical weapons. No, but then you can't say <laughs> you, you, you can't say because you slap me. <laughs> Uh, you slap me and then I punch you. You can say no, but I slapped you. Why don't you slap me back? You can't tell me how to react. Yeah, but there are rules to this shit. Yeah, who makes just... the rules? Because if you take the first punch, I'm going to come guns blazing. No, mm, there are unspoken rules. Even you, there's just limits you would never cross. In fact, I think for everything, even for me, who's considered myself like a hustler, there's lines I won't cross for money. You know what I mean? So, of course, there are, these rules are unspoken or unwritten, but everybody knows, like, hey, this would be too much. But you crossed a few lines for money. I live with it, Apu, Pampando. Do we have, because I have not gone through the script, do we have the reality show in the script? Uh, yes, we do. We're coming, we're coming to that. Okay. Because I would like about. to talk to you about that, my man. Okay. Yeah. I think we need to start wrapping up. <laughs> <laughs> um, you remember I told you I was coming, right? 
I've been ready. Like the big O. He's coming like the big O. Um, like a what? You, you know, uh, Mikey too. Mm. You, you're a veteran in the game. Mm. And as a veteran in the game, are you comfortable with where the rap game is going? Like, are you liking what you're hearing right now? Like the people you're passing the baton on to? Baton to? Are you happy with what you're hearing right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of um, Jada is amazing. Um, Natasha Chance is amazing. Yeah. Um, King Elest is, when you just see him, you just see it. This one is a superstar. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think the game is in safe hands. But one thing I know about like music and just um, generations or, or what do you call those things? My uncle or my dad or uh, those who came before me yeah. would tell you like, Hello, Fadi Pupate room by Fuecamo Franco, my Diru system, or ABCD. Ababa, it's a very one of the room. Even when uh, the new Zambian music, like after 2000, there are a lot of older people who felt like this is computer music. Real music when pe- people used to play with bands and like, <coughs> live instruments in them. So I don't, I'm not really going to understand what these kids are making now. And I'm not even going to force myself to try. Yeah. But what I look at really when judging music is I just see how people respond to it. And if, like I've been to shows like Lake Road, Chan Yoko, Nabakataka Variety Show, Variety Show, Shan Shan, School, whatever. And I yeah. see these kids like, who's those chap? Muko S and uh, who's those? Muko. N- Nicholas would know. Muko. Muko and Nico? Iko Ace. And Iko Ace? Muko. I have no idea yeah. who those so are. Yeah. They go on before me. Yeah. Never heard of them. I've seen them around there. And they're, making the, and they're making the crowd move. And the crowd just goes crazy. And they're like, who the hell Show is that? But I just see how the crowd is singing along, ah. word for word. Hmm. And I know like these kids are doing something right. And um, and I think that's really important with us is that you, you don't expect people to make yeah. music the way you were making music or to make the decisions that you made. In fact, like... Um, the Copper Belt music. Yeah. Of course, there was the whole Nasty D version of Copper yeah. Belt music. Then there was our version of mu- the Copper yeah. Belt, like Dandy, and me, Afunika, and ABCD. Now there's White Sailor, but Chandana K. Chandana K. There's a Chooser somewhere in the background, Chooser International. Akina yeah. Popo and just, that's like. You know what I'm enjoying as well? Mm. The youths. Umusepela Chile, Umusepela Crown. I think they're coming up good as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Speaking think, of, uh, sorry, you were saying? You think? I think, I think um, we're in safe hands, really. And the thing about Zambian music <clears throat> now is it's so diverse. You can't even say like, yo, me, I don't listen to Zambian yeah, music. Yeah, true. Like it's one thing. Like the range is mad, like from like Pompey and Ebo Chungu to yeah. YSL band. <laughs> yeah. Like Shandana the range is just crazy. The whole spectrum. We can, yeah. can pick something out of what's coming up now. Yeah. Speaking of something coming soon. Muzo working with uh, Zengerman. Zengerman. Yeah. Where are you and Muzo at right now? Um, so unfortunately, like even when I worked with Muzo, it was really like um, maybe this is not like the best approach, but we need to get him to a place where he's comfortable and he can loosen up a bit. Mm. And maybe the one thing that he he really thrives on is music. So let's start by working with uh, working on some music. And I guess that's the same thing that Muzengaman is doing. But with people in his position, obviously he needs like a lot of rehab. He needs um, like professional help. Yeah. It's not just recording music. Yeah. You know, record music and then the next day you find him on the street and then what? You know what I mean? So um, I had this conversation with Muzengaman the other day. I was like, yo, um, I really appreciate what you're doing and I see what you're doing. I, I commend it. But bro, We've been here, you know what I mean? King Deza um, kind of uh, did this thing. Uh, there was another guy called uh, Boniface Mulilo. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to Boniface. <clears throat> like there are a couple of people who've tried to help this guy. And I think the missing piece is really that one thing where you get him the professional help that he needs. Um, so of course I'm not hands on. But um, like I told Mzengaman the other days, uh, I'm a call away and uh, yeah. there's a way that we can facilitate that he gets help. 
Because I know, uh, you know, a lot of people accused you of delaying his album and his career and all that back then. So all that's behind us now, is it? Yeah, but even that same story, it's almost like, um, it's almost like, what if I'm a story about me, I'm not even supposed to defend myself. Yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. Just blame this guy. I'll take the blame. It's fine. Blame the black guy. Yeah. Yeah, just hit on me as, as, as much as you, you can. Just hit on me means something totally different, man. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> can we address the elephant in the room now? I know Elson has been itching to talk about this the whole time. The reality show. Elson, what? Ask, ask away. Yes. <laughs> How's the reality show coming yeah. along, man? New fame? I think, new check? Uh, I don't think it's... The, the experience is new. Um, the fame and the check is... We've been here before. How much did you get for it? Why would I tell you that? I'm just curious. North of three million, four million, five million kwacha. I wouldn't tell you that. <laughs> about a million, from, but we've been seeing the new cars, so it's just about a million from what I hear. Give uh, or take. That's too little. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, like I wouldn't tell. You. It's not even the issue it's, anyway. It's yeah. But um, you're happy. So 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 what out? So so what out? What yeah. I find out, Mister Two is how much in a reality show is real? Uh, as much as possible. So what we do is, like, um, right now the guys are, sh- are, are filming. Oh, the, oh is this going to be in your reality yeah. show? How don't you know this? No, I, I knew. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that camera has been facing down the table the whole time. Maybe we go half the time. Oh, yeah. You, you mentioned that the last time that I yeah. saw you. But anyway, yes, you were saying, so how much so of your reality show? How much there? of this has been scripted? Of, of what we're doing what now? What we're doing here? None. Nah. For my show. For my show. Nah, it's so like, real. Hey, hey, Elson, uh, you need to act like this or ask me this question. No, no, I, I hear you. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm driving to a so, point So what this. we do with the show is we... We, the producers look at my schedule and see what is going to happen. Oh, wow, okay, you've got a gig on this day, or you've got the Z podcast on this day, or you're going to the barber shop at this time and ABC. Yeah. And the guys with the cameras know when to catch me. Is your camera rolling for the reality show? It was. Oh, it was. They've taken what they needed, so they're good. Okay. Now, yeah. So, <clears throat> because because what I would like to find out, because look at it this way. So. You're a role model. Plenty of people look up to you for mm. the draw inspiration. Mm. But what the one thing that I am always cognizant of is because I remember Slep touched on this mm. how a lot of the things is smokes and mirrors. Of course, and that <clears throat> half the things that these rappers show in the music videos or whatever it is they don't actually hire own. Models hire a mansion and shoot like. That's where yeah. I'm going. So, do you live in the house that is on the reality show? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Manik, you've done well for yourself. Man. You believe that? Well, <laughs> if he says he does, why shouldn't I believe him? Why shouldn't you believe me? Well, I've got I've got some <laughs> birds in a tree that I want to sell you. Then, if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Because I own. I know the guy that owns the house. Mm-hmm. He's into construction. Yeah. Does he live in the house? He's got a couple of them. Does he? Because I know like a bunch of people who live in different, own different houses, but do they live there? No, but okay. Moving along. Another well, thing maybe that may- the question would have been, should have been, do I own the house I live in? Then I would have said no. Yeah, so that's why I said, do you own the house that you live in in the reality show? No, you asked if I lived in the house that we use in the reality TV show. Do you live there? <laughs> yeah. Do you own it? No! Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> K Plus, do you own the house you live in? No, 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 not yet. No, not like, yet. I'm still talking to Enoch Mwepo. Zambians don't own the houses they live in. Oh, so no. you're not, not going to ask me? What? Oh, he owns his house. No, I, I, I'm not. In Kingsland. <laughs> rich, rich kid. <laughs> All right, moving along. Interesting. Can we talk about your wife, though? I know ordinarily before this, you would hardly talk about your wife, man. But now that yeah. she's in the public domain, we can talk about Huntinga. And she's like the breakout star of the show. How are you feeling about this? Your wife, you know, is also in the limelight now. People are taking a liking to her. Like, I'm also enjoying yeah. what I'm seeing on TV. Like, you she's real. Enjoy- wait, wait, you are enjoying? 
what I've, had, what I've been seeing of her on TV. In she's real. Wife. Yes, she's been real. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always have to make everything sound so corrupt? Fam. You're making it sound corrupt. Fam. Damn. Okay, you know what I mean. Anyway, so. She's been a good performer so far. Anyway. Um, Damn, Yolson. So anyway, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I think I signed up for what I do. Like wow, okay. even the, um, the fame comes with a lot of uh, publicity, um, bad press sometimes. Um, you, you have to carry yourself a certain way. And mm-hmm. I signed up for this. Um, I've kept my family private because I know they didn't sign up for this. So even when doing this, yeah. um, we had to have a proper conversation about it. And I'm she was really cool with this. doing it. So, yeah. You should sort of become the star of the show. Though. There's always that unexpected right. person who, that, who rises to the top in every reality show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing, though. Yeah, it is. It is. Is she making about the same that you're making from the... Of course not. It's not... No, I mean, uh, like, is she making good money from it? Yeah, definitely. That's Why nice would she do it then? No, I'm just saying. Like, maybe it's only you getting paid because it's your show. You're King Booger. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, the, the show, obviously... Um, Elson is yes, Mr. Is Two. Hopefully, at the end of the day, um, our viewers will have like a, a, a better understanding of what we do and, and, and who, who you we are. are. Um, the reason why I decided to do this is, yeah, like, um, obviously, after Big Brother, and people had seen me like a lot, being yeah, me they had like a, a way deeper understanding than before. Um, Cause back then I'd get phone calls from people, like I'd, someone would call me and I'd talk to them for the first time. And that really expected me to sound like, <laughs> you know, I don't like, know why people think all couple people speak like that, man. And was very temper. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, maybe that's p- like part of the reason I'm from the corporate bread <laughs> and associated to Jeff yeah. Wars and ABCD and, <sighs> It's either when you're from the Cobra Belt, there are two extremes. It's either people think you are a hustler and you guys are united and all that good shit, or they just think you are a bundu hostile. Then yeah, you can't even speak terrible. English. Because <laughs> yeah. anytime people post something about Copala people, it's with broken English or people looking a certain way. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, obviously. <laughs> so um, that's why we did it, really. It's um, like after such a long career and after doing all these things, I needed to do something different that was going to be classified as a growth and something yeah. that would just um, be a first in Zambia. Um, of course, like um, a bunch of people have tried to do reality TV shows back then. I know um, Irish shot a reality TV show. I was part of that, actually. It just it's too bad it got Which shot one, down. Which one, the <sighs> No, she had a reality show. It's too about- bad it got shot down before yeah. it even aired. Um, yeah. She um, spoke about it in the episode we did. She, but she remember she said she got paid. Yeah, yeah she did get porn? paid. No, the reality show. Oh, that, that which that's was supposed a to go, one, which is not that. Which was supposed to go on DSTV. She even got paid for yeah. it, but it was shot down before it even aired. Yeah, um, yeah. Cleo and Kuni and them also did like um, Lusaka Hustle. Yeah, and even that was cancelled midway. I hope ours doesn't. Like, yeah, you're anyway. doing pretty well so far. Yeah, the reviews haven't been bad. No, they've been made some people like you. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't give you bad reviews. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give any review, Mr. Two. I didn't give any review. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's TV. So with TV, you're trying to um, polish it as much as possible. Even if it's, um, it's, it's like me when I know I'm coming for an interview like Z Podcast. Yeah. I need to dress for the occasion like at least. And the man looks good. Put his hands together, damn it. Damn it. Look at that. Hands together, damn it. But so now you see where the stereotype of Copala people comes from now, right? Right? You know what? <laughs> There's, there's white people here at King Book and you're uh, standing on tables. And you know, on one of the episodes, you actually talk about how people make memes <laughs> of your fashion sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the same way I'll dress um, for coming for a show like this, where I know yeah. like the cameras and ABC. Obviously, even the show, we try and polish it up as, as much as possible. Hey, we're shooting a scene in the kitchen. Let's clean up. Hey, uh, we're pulling up at this. Let's try and make it look good for TV. Yeah. But believe me, 
most of those scenes are exactly like if I'm meeting slap on the show, I'm really going to meet slap on the show. And if you're not romantic, you're not romantic like your wife said. Of course. She, your, the wife says, him, Abba, rom- romance, cooking for me, impossible. You're, you're never that kind of guy. Ever. Yeah, romantic, <laughs> ever. Are you? Me, I know like shitty guys who are sweet and they'll <laughs> open the door for women and pull chairs. And do the worst things behind the scenes. Do all those things. And yeah. And I know like Copala commanders who are like sweet to their women, you know, yeah, like the yeah. kindest people. So where are you? In the middle. Balance. <laughs> mm. This life. Balance, Nelson. No, balance. No balance. So do, do you do your research of the podcast before you come on? Um, or is just you ask, wing it? Ask uh, K, K Plus. Yes, he, he called me yesterday. I was like, yo, so what's off limits? And I was like, yo, let's try it. Let's just set um, it. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, but I replicate energy. If right. you've been an ass, I can be a big ass. Mm-hmm. And you actually uh, mentioned Deborah to me, style. I think I can be an ass divorce style. Ah, punchline. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I missed that. That went over my head. Deborah yeah. got famous for twerking and shaking ass all over social media. So, oh, okay. yeah. I remember you mentioned, if, uh, I think that was like five months. We've been planning this for over six months, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. the first time I brought up the idea of you coming onto this podcast, the first thing you said to me is, K Plus, I'm not coming because you stole my idea. You were planning on doing a podcast as well. Yeah, I'm st- yeah. I'm, I, I still want to do it. I man. think you I should. We need it. more podcasts yeah. to cast a light um, on the industry. And real talk, um, yeah. you guys, I, I'm i really proud of what you're doing. Like, at first, where's Lloyd? Like the oh Lloyd, yeah. Lloyd is not shooting it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Now I see like a whole ten man crew, that's, that's crew. That's your and, and ten yeah. cameras and yeah. yeah. Oh man, you. It hasn't growth. been so long, but there's been a lot of growth, man. And Dude. I re- <clears throat> so trendsetters, yeah. In terms of. Of course, there have been a couple of my people are doing like podcasts, yeah, university kids, ABCD. Yeah, yeah. But this is like probably like the first. Like this is the first, like an actual podcast. Can you clap for us? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. We need. We are cutting this little piece out. Yeah. We yeah. are using that in the promo. For real, man. Like um, this is like an actual podcast. Thank like, you. You know the craziest thing um, is. I was saying to, to Kalinga, I called Kalinga the other day. I've had a new asshole torn into my back because I've yep. had people attack me. Mm. We, we had an episode and people you know, accused me of all kinds of things. And Kalinga too, being yeah. a misogynist and whatnot. So, you know, the craziest thing is the comments are split right down the middle. Mm. Half the people, just like you say, they love the podcast. The other half are, are trash talking. What I have in me is, for whatever reason, I gravitate towards the negative comments, and those are the ones that I read, and those are the ones that get to me. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever do you ever go through that? So um, obviously, the I do think they say is like, guys, I'm Iron Man. I don't get touched by that shit. Teflon skin. The truth is, (laughs) and. There's a small part that's really true. Like there's some truth to that because because this whole thing didn't happen overnight for me yeah. because I had to go through all these phases. I mean, your night was 20 years long. People so. have said like the meanest things about me. In fact, not if, it, if you went to a government school, all of us used to be teased for something. Yeah. Big eyes, big forehead. Me, my teeth all the time, especially that I had what braces. What do you think I was teased for? Sorry? What the big nose? Your forehead, maybe? My complexion. I was called Midnight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, you uh, are you, you are pretty dark. Dark as train smoke. Anyway, darker than berry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So obviously, like, I, there's nothing people can say now that mm. really get to me like that. Yeah. But even then, mm-hmm. the way the mind works is ten people will give you compliments. That one idiot who will say. That's the one thing that and you get. focus right. on that, right? Yeah. yeah, so I don't read comments like that's what he said to me that don't read it now. Ah, but I'm depressed, I'm depressed. In fact, I think between like July and October, yeah, I displayed uh, some tough guy, whatever, but really, 
it got to you. That stuff got to me because yeah. Um, or the, 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 was, the election stuff, the PF stuff, yeah, post election. Yeah. And what what was really like um, getting to me more than even like what people were saying and all that stuff is really like yo, you really did let down all these people. Because really, those are the people who get to you, not the haters. I expect haters to hate. Yeah. But there are people who you know, like this one, they even have like a top fan badge. Mm. And they're still really hurt by what stuff you like that. So, yeah. Um, there are comments who, that get to me. But I try by all means not to read. I mean, yeah, we are unlikely. <coughs> We're still trying to find our feet. This only started uh, late last year. Late oh, last year. Yeah, late yeah, last year. Yeah, we started uh, December. No. Oh, snap. Around November. November. Why yeah, do you feel yeah. like you've been here for like... Feels like we've been here for years. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. Okay, so oh, one one thing I know about, because I listen to a lot of podcasts, mm-hmm. is a podcast really is different from like an interview on radio or ABC. Talk like the about culture it. culture is really, really different. And I'm you, so glad you're bringing this you up. Don't, you don't expect it to go like that route where... Yeah. Oh, guy, uh, be professional and you can't ask that question. <laughs> oh, ABCD my God. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Man, um, preach. Talk about it. I say it exactly the same goddamn thing. I just throw my headphones. People, let me, let me, oh, fuck. Let, let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> People are saying to me, I'll tell you like some of the mm. fucked up comments I get. So this is, this is my show as much as it's Kalenga's. Yeah. You, you start an idea and you have someone who is behind a keyboard that says, that says I, I read this and I, I honestly stared at this comment for a second. They say it to me, but how can you go for an interview wearing flip-flops? Like, guys, sounds like And in my mind, I am thinking, listen, Jimmy K wears fucking suits. You want someone that is well-dressed? Go there. You're not gonna come and subscribe to something only for you now to bring your own fucking two cents. Yeah, and I think that's what makes <clears throat> podcasts dope, though, is that it's very unfiltered, very unconventional, very um, do it uh, how you want it. Do it how yeah. you want it. People it's, will be it's like, your show. Yeah. It's your podcast. It's your. Ra- how could he interrogate this person that way? Like, listen, if, if you want something which is cuddly, watch the Teletubbies or ZMBC. <laughs> You're not going to come here and expect us to be all tickle, tickle, joke, joke. No, man. Don't do that. Market 2, in conclusion, we always end with Zed Trivia. And just hello, 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 hello. You know the reason why I told you we're only going to do this after my album drops? <laughs> yeah. Or oh, because you want to plug your album. We're coming to that. Dude, can, that's in the way. This is the best shorts. place. We're coming I, to I that. This. Yeah. This let's is the talk, best okay, place. let's talk about Oli Jabba. I was bringing that in, but let's bring oh. it out now. Let's talk about Oli Jabba, yeah. Yeah, Olijaba means original. Obviously, if you search for the definition and the yeah. dictionary, you won't find it. Upper street. Upper <laughs> <laughs> street. For, but yeah. Olijaba Urban means dictionary. original. And I want. I really wanted to do like a themed album. Um, initially, we were supposed to do uh, 21 songs. Uh, but unfortunately, I had this um, <coughs> boom play and they just needed um, 12 songs. So imagine we had to cut down 10 songs out of the album. Mm. Um, but somehow we found a way of just creating some sort of balance. If you listen to the first two songs, you know where I'm going with this. You know it ties into the album cover, into the theme of the whole thing. I just wanted to encourage people to be more authentic or, or original. And when I say that, a lot of people just associate it to tradition and kumushi and ABCD, but yeah. really just being true to who you are as a human being, you know? And um, when you listen to the project, I really, really emphasize that. <coughs> Even um, when you're doing a concept album, obviously it's quite a concept album, but yo, Mary J. Blythe, I don't, I don't know if it was pain or heartbreak, or what was that album? Where like every song is re- literally talking about her relationships and whatever. Yeah, there was a common theme, a yeah. common thread in that album. We don't do that here, unfortunately. In yeah. Zambia. You can have one song where you're saying, uh, I'm single and I'm happy, and another song where you're deeply in love. You can have one <laughs> song where you are a gangster, and another song where, where you you're are. a pimp. Yeah. So uh, even with this project, of course, we tried 
to touch on different different subjects yeah and um different different audiences we have gospel songs we have hip-hop songs people have wanted me to rap again for a while so i think we have like four songs on the album that are really like hip-hop the intro itself um two by two um must be the man and family over everything with chefie and toila and so far we're breaking records on boom play we have um we're on seven million wow, wow. you know um yeah the reviews have been great and it's incredible man <clears throat> for this to be like the last project at least this is how i'm feeling right now like the last project i'm really proud of the work that we put in um shout out to everybody that's behind um, the music tishan um mcknight mr stash uh your maps so many um <coughs> people behind the scenes man and the other 10 songs what, what happens to them though That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. I, I, I want to I wanna find out something. Yeah. Mr. Two. Um from an artist. I think I asked Lefty this this mm-hmm. question. When you make when you make um when you make a song mm-hmm. and it turns out to be a hit, when you're making the song, do you know it is going to be a hit? Um I think you know it's a good song but you don't know if it's going to be a hit because the people decide at the end of the day. Um there are a lot of songs that I think should have been hits even songs by other people but that turn, that there are songs that be. are hits that I think like mm, how is this song a hit? Shout out to the third but Imwe people say what was that? <laughs> but yeah, um yeah. the people get to decide and sometimes as artists you you really have no choice i always tell like young emerging artists this is like all you have to do is your part like mm-hmm. there's a 50% that's your job like make sure you do your research find a target audience like make the best music that you can make but the universe does its thing also you know what i mean like at some point it's just your time you call for a song and it's a smash hit yeah and sometimes you make the best song and you just like It's a dad. I, I am gifted and and I put in everything. It's not even good. <laughs> you know? And I know a lot of artists even right now who deserve like deserve to be bigger than they are, you know. Um shout out to artists like um Critic like yeah. Critic man like I don't know many episodes I've spoken about Critic like, though. Critic is amazing yeah. man and he he deserves like more love than he gets. Yeah, you know. True. I don't even think he's underrated. I think just people just been they, they're not even sleeping on him like they're dead you <laughs> yeah. know is yeah. the, is the, has there ever been a song that you have released that you sort of regret that you be like you know what I should have I should have kept this so i think the an artist's greatest asset is knowing like what's a dope song and what's like a whack song i've recorded a bunch of songs that will never come out because maybe as we were recording i realized ah i would do that way yeah mm. you know that sort of thing and sometimes you have this great idea and even as you take it to the producer and producer makes the beat you know it's not the one and mm. you don't even record the song so um for the most part most artists especially when you get to a point where you can just record any yeah you can't afford studio time so you just have to record this song and but when you get to a point where you can record and you have like 30 songs that haven't come out yet. Yeah. When you put out a song, then you have read it, you have a lot of confidence in this song. Galwatu nani jaro. Kula wa wako na heart broken pan or not. Ah. Yeah, but believe me, you go to the studio, you spend hours recording this song and you take it to different people, mix it, chano, I do a guitarist, study shamo. That's just how much faith you have in this song. So when you get to a point where you actually even put it out. Hmm, it's now to be the vama to do career. What what's the process like though when you're making a song? Do you smoke do you weed? Write? Yeah, well, yeah, do you have like a ritual? <laughs> do you have like a socks like your underwear? <laughs> no, but it's different different things for different people. Some yeah. smoke weed, some drink, some what? What do you do? <clears throat> I don't even think I have a specific ritual. Club of that, now for that shit I'm inspired and I have It's light bulb like I've got a great idea and then you go to studio. Just do this now. So there are two main um ways of making music. One is where like what you are saying is way important than how it sounds. Like how you what you, what you say is 
way more important than how you say it. So, idea kulemba first to rimbo alulemba lo nselo watu ala go studio and find a beat that will fit in mm. what you're trying to do. All right, that's what and I was And then asking, there's a situation where like what I'm saying doesn't matter, but how I'm saying it needs to be dope. So the <laughs> the main thing is the melody and how it sounds, yeah. the bounce and all that stuff. Um so you make the whole beat and try and find the most catchy beat and try and find actually heard this from write, so, so so you do it in reverse you get yeah. the beat and then you sort of write according to that yeah so ngazanga fe muntu ari imbe fi abu puba fe chances are ari panga beat elo asanga mo fe fi fi onse ta kunda but usually that's why you find yeah. that most songs where like person is really really alela nde fi amano san you'd find that the beat is not even slapping like that for some reason the even the producer knows that the vocals and what this guy is saying needs to be more clear than the beat mm. in most mm. cases it's mid tempo or slow yeah if you listen to like a lot of <coughs> danny's music because danny was known for his lyrics and his controversy and abcd most of his beats are just like just few very and keyboard and a beat yeah yeah because like his lyrics were more important They're more profound the very profound than, yeah than the actual thing but different people use different techniques all right cool um should we even do the z trivia how many hours have we done man how much time have we got if any we've done three hours plus two hours plus two hours plus oh, yeah. all right cool we, we might have to cut this into two parts yeah <laughs> oh, this is our Who are you? content uh director creator <laughs> Uh, I think you need a mic. Yeah, you were saying. I'm saying approval. Yeah. Because you can stand next to one. Oh. I thought. No, you cut it out. Cut it out. This is for Marshall. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. So dealing approval. Let's yeah. Say in his in, in his career. Oh, okay. I think you need a mic then. Yeah. So he spent a lot of heavy people say bad things about him. Ah. So, okay, so but what, we've already kind of touched on that though. But so anyway, I can I can with the show is sorry Mr. Gilbert, let me just cut you short here. We've we yeah. <clears throat> segmented the um, show into like um different themes for every episode. Right. Okay. So on this particular episode, which is like the show before the 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 episode before the last one is um remember this whole show is like a road to me putting out the album. Ah. Yeah. So on this particular uh, episode I talk to different people about how they feel about the music and what we've been able to do and whether it's the right time to hang the mic just seeking approval. So I'm talking to Danny and JK and Exa and Maureen Dilanda and just different different um uh, people who are considered like these are legends in the industry. That's right, where cool. the podcast is. Ah, uh, sweet. Okay. 11th episode. <laughs> right. Just in conclusion, this episode of course brought to you by Let's Chat. Would you encourage people to use Let's Chat? I'm a brand ambassador for Let's Chat. Yeah, so let's talk about Let's Chat. They cut me a check every month. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Let's Chat. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, Let's Chat. How, how does even how does Let's Chat work? Um putting the man on the spot here. Putting the man on the spot. <laughs> Who sent you? Obviously, um Let's Chat has got like a um it's like a social media app. You can um call on less chat you can send um voice messages on less chat yeah, you I'll can do. make video calls uh voice calls and it's got these um cool bonus features where you shake your phone and <laughs> you... i don't know <laughs> don't do that in front of Wilson, please no 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 i don't know what that gesture was <laughs> <laughs> shake your phone so, pe- so, good season. so so people can find it on is uh, wrong People can find it on the Play Store and download it, shake the phone and you can actually invite friends by shaking the phone. I've seen I've seen you do that on the on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, just um Google Let's Chat is a cool app and um let's chat. yeah, I'd right, recommend right. it. Let's, let's chat. Check it out. All right, let's chat. All right, this episode brought to you by Let's a, Chat there's a, there's and there's a lot uh, more that we didn't ask though, that we left on the table. Um, well, not, not that on the script, just yeah. like stuff that comes into mind because this guy is a minefield of information. You know, I'd been talking to Kalinga about you before yeah. you came on, okay. and he he 
he sings praises about how well read you are. I don't really think <laughs> I'm well read. In fact, I think my whole career, my whole life, I think I've only read like eight books. And four of those books, because I used to do literature in school. Yeah. So when you had NFA imprisonment over Batala, Anime Farm, Mushan. Farm. Yeah. And then the other books are like very practical books, like 48 Laws of Power. Oh, well, that I know you've read, yeah. Uh, 50th, 50th Law. 50th Law. Like that. That's 50 Cent, right? Yeah. yeah. And Robert Greene. And Robert Green. I enjoyed yeah. that book, actually. Any people in your phone who, who would you say you, the most famous person you have in your phone is? The most famous person I have in my phone. Apart from me. I, uh, that many? No, like, because, you know, like, the same way uh, people pester me about, you know, I, like, the last year I've been trying to get collaborations with different, different artists. And I just have huge numbers. So I have like Diamond Platinum's, Davido, Caspar, K. Interesting. Nobody like do so what I, I, I don't know who's like yeah. the most popular person. And uh, ah, I'm not going to talk about you with the moon. Ah, I'm going to talk about the moon. Let's save that for the next one. All right, Mike, it's been real. Thanks a lot for coming through. That's it, podcast. To the next episode, have a lovely evening.